Previously on Getting Dirty, I am putting in a new perennial bed and I'm so excited to show you the whole process. I'm gonna plant the blooming things that really add some great interest. This is the fun part. It's like the jewelry or accessories. Once you know how to plant a shrub, a tree, a perennial, you kind of get the idea and you can do it over and over again. It is like a pollinator's dream. So to keep weeds down and to keep moisture in, you always want to top dress with some mulch. That's it for the perennial bed, and what a transformation. Hi guys, I'm Caleb. I grew up in the middle of cornfields in Iowa, and now I live on a farm of my own. I grow a lot of my own food, but also love landscaping my yard. Have you ever wanted to landscape your yard, but it just seems kind of overwhelming? This is the start to finish basics of what you need to know so you can be inspired to do your own. Whether you want to plant one shrub, a flower, or a whole project. So come with me, let's go outside, because at the end of the day, it's all about getting dirty. Hey guys, we are done in my house with the perennial bed and we are moving across the road over to my mom's because I kind of have a whole new vision for that area. So let me come show you what I'm gonna do. So this is my mom's, let's call it East Yard. That makes it sound a lot more luxurious than it is. But on the east side, there has always been this really long white fence. It juts, makes an L, and you know what? I kind of need a blank slate to re-envision, so it is coming out. But I've already started doing some planting of a whole new orchard that I want beyond the fence, and I'm really excited about it. Along the fence has always been this cottage-style perennial bed. Lots of different flowers, lots of different colors and things going on, but really nothing during the winter. And mom was ready for something all new. So for this new vision, I'm creating a long limestone wall, of course a step right in the middle to give that presence of focal point that I need, and then a long hedge of green mountain boxwood. <laughs> I am obsessed with boxwood and with hedges, so this is gonna be gorgeous. And just to give you more of that feel of rooms, because when you have an expansive yard, you almost need to create rooms. So you might as well think of it as outdoor rooms. I am planting some really large, eventually large, arborvitae trees. Right now, they're pretty small, but eventually they're gonna create just this long, green, lush wall. And who doesn't want that? And that will create that intimate space that I'm really wanting. This is not a quick stop and go process. This is gonna be kind of an extensive, you know, let's just say multiple year process. But to start all off, I need the anchor of this wall. But eventually, the vegetable garden is gonna to have to get moved. It has been here since my great grandma and grandpa lived on this farm, believe it or not. So I think it's time to move it because you know what? It's probably good to move a garden around every so often. So eventually that's gonna get moved, but it's planted this year, so we're not gonna be moving it this year. But this fall, when it's all cleared off, I'm gonna grade that out so I have a beautiful open space up here. And as you probably know, I am working with my friends at Monrovia to have the best possible starts of boxwood that I can get. When you're planning a hedge or honestly anything that you wanna enjoy, why not start with the best and start with a premium grower that knows what they're doing? Because I can tell you from experience, having a plant that is growing at a good facility where they know what they're doing, is gonna give you a lot better start than just a random one that doesn't look that great. So why not just start with the best? I might as well get a little bit dirty here and just take that fence right on out. So since this fence is coming out and I have no idea what I'm doing or how it's gonna go, I thought, you know what? My mom happens to be gone. Great time to come over, mess up, not tell her, maybe break something, hopefully she'll never know, and hopefully maybe get this fence out. And just to be safe, but also to protect your hands, you should always wear gloves, or your hands will end up looking like mine. And I can promise you, they look like they're 90. And I am not 90, so I don't wanna hear any jokes about that. But if you put gloves on, it is gonna save them. We're just gonna start trying to take a shovel and see if we can just dig this up. I honestly don't even know how deep this goes. It's obviously gonna be farther than I think. You're probably wondering, is it not extremely unsafe to wear um, flip-flop type shoes? Yeah, it's really stupid actually, and you always should wear closed-toed shoes. I, for some reason, hardly ever do. My feet get hot. I know that's really stupid when I cut off a toe, you all are gonna be like, yeah, that's why. Hopefully you won't witness an atrocity here. It moves at least, that's, that's an improvement. Oh, I found a knife. 
My mom uses knives when she gets weeds out, so she obviously just left a um, pruning knife out here at one point. You know what? Sometimes you just gotta jiggle it, move it, and just kind of keep working with it until it breaks free. Is it? I think these are supposed to be able to slide out somehow, but they do have an interlocking piece that kind of when you slide them in, it locks. So I'll see if I can take them apart. I don't know. But it's still not. And I'm gonna be honest, this may be one of the more frustrating things I've done. It is. It's frustrating. There's one. So eventually I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna pop up all those posts, lay the whole fence over, take it apart. Mom wanted to reuse it, right? <laughs> yeah, and then when I'm into it, I'm like, you know what? I just wanna drive a truck through it and get rid of this thing. Thankfully, since mom's gone, she has no idea that this is kind of going bad. She's kind of a worry wart, so when things don't go well, all of a sudden it's like, what, should we do it? Should we not? This is happening either way. If nothing else, pieces are gonna be flying. I'm gonna move on to the next post, see if that helps. So it moves. Interesting. It's like, this is one long piece. Oh, every other. This is then a long piece from here to here. Didn't expect that. Who knew you learn something every day? So um, these pieces don't just go from one post to the other. No, they're double length. They actually go from one post through one post to the other post. You'd think that could be easier, but no, it actually kind of makes it more difficult. So, um, you know, this is a whole, I am a fence master now, and I do know one thing. I am not going into the fencing business. No. So you know what? Let's just start taking whatever tool we can find in the shop. So I got some putty knives. We are gonna just kind of riggy jig them in there, try to get it out. Has to work, right? <sighs> okay. So yes, that's more work than I thought. <laughs> it's gonna be worth it. Um, putty knives, help. Did I scratch it? Yeah. Will we tell anyone? No. Um, we're just gonna keep keep chugging along and hoping somehow it could um gets better or cooler or breezier. I'm gonna guess that after this, I'm gonna get some comments from you guys. You're like, you know what? All you had to do was this and it would just been so easy. Please just refrain from those because I don't know if I'm really healed over from this process. Just so you know, no one saw those putty knives, okay? Because I have no idea where they ended up because by the time I was done with them, they just kind of looked like they had been through a tornado. So um, goodbye putty knives. So that's out. And sometimes, you know what? When you get yourself in over your head over a job, you just dig your way out. You can't bury me. Well, not, not yet. I'm, I'm digging out. We'll get this done. Oh, friends. Friends don't let friends take out fences, I don't think, but um, I got no friends here. Just for some satisfaction, I'm taking this pole out. Yep, here it comes. Oh, there's like dirt in it. That's why it's heavy. One down. Probably only a hundred to go, guys. It's like two times I have to do it, too. Because I have to go through this and then through this. <laughs> you know what? Let's just get real here, friends. This is a long process that I don't think any of you really needed or wanted to see. I had to, you know what? I don't even know where the camera ended up because I was telling the camera guy, you are getting in here and you were helping me. Cameras went flying, things went flying. You know what? The fence came out. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And um, we have a blank slate now. So the landscaping crew is coming tomorrow and I am pretty excited to see this. So it's a few days later and a little bit of a landscaping crew has arrived to install the wall. I'm a little excited for the wall. And they got right to work. Obviously the fence is gone. And as you can see, it kind of made a big difference and really opened up this space. And you can see from the equipment that they're packing, it's probably good to hire a professional because I ain't hauling all those rock by hand. No, I tried. You, you think you can do it. It's really heavy. Yummy. First they dug a trench and that is gonna give a level base layer. And then they're gonna add in the gravel and that's what the stone is gonna go on top of. This is obviously a pretty large process, but it's amazing how quick they can do it. It's like one day and it would be probably about a year or more for me and I probably would never actually get it done because I might die doing it all by myself. So 
So obviously sometimes what is in your head can't always come out perfectly. And you know what? This is kind of the perfect example. I had a step here and really the land wasn't low enough that you really needed that full step. So after talking, we were first gonna just do no step and just have it be a natural step off the wall. And then I decided, well, maybe I'll just on my own dig in one of the rocks kind of as its own step. So as you can see, things change, it works out, it will happen, it will look awesome eventually. So when it comes to product, you could do a lot of different things. You could do created, you know, kind of that man-made retaining wall stone, which works well, but I chose a natural limestone. One, because it's native to Iowa, and I really like choosing products that seem organic and like they would come from the area. And it happened to already be sitting somewhere that it was aged, which is even better because I want it to look like it's been here. They told me I could power wash them, get them clean. I don't, I don't want to do that. I love how they look. They almost look antiqued, which, you know, me, antique, it just makes sense. You want it to be like that. And it looks like it's been there now after it's in. Perfect. And actually, that's going to be really nice because that will be like another, like that, which will be really nice. I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of um, that piece of equipment. That is going to tamp the gravel. They're going to run it across. It's going to vibrate and just pack everything together. It's like, it's like an adult version of like the slot toys at like rest stops. Okay, I know it's gonna sound odd, but when you kind of just stop and think about it, to think that this stone was just cut out of the earth, and then it's just laid here. It's kind of really bizarre. And okay, I'm probably overthinking it, but you have to admit, it's kind of cool. Wow, he's actually really agile with that. <laughs> if I did it, I would have knocked someone out by now. <laughs> so um, they're obviously really good at this, and I'm kind of just like shocked and in awe as I watch them. Don't you wish you could just have this done all the time? Because, wow. So as they lay the pieces, they're checking for how level they are and to make sure the overall line is gonna be the same because you don't wanna to get to the end and have it be way off, which honestly in the past, I've done on little things I've done. You get to the end and you start way different than where you were in the beginning. So they obviously know what they're doing, where someone like me probably would not. To create a more intimate feeling on that top side of the wall, I had it kind of L back at each corner because then that's really gonna define a space up there. And that's where I'm gonna plant that long hedge that I'm really excited about. So I really wanted it to cut back at each corner and make an L. So the people, and when you're walking up on top, you feel that intimate feeling of almost being closed in slightly. And you know what, honestly, while I'm talking here, I noticed I really need to kind of check my garlic that I put over here in my mom's garden. So I might just kind of run up there and quick pull one out to see, cause it kind of looks like it's ready to go. It's not quite ready yet, but it's getting close. I just want to check the head. When it starts to brown like this, you know it's getting close, but I'll give it a couple more weeks. Okay, so that's it for today. It's really exciting at this point to see the progress, and I will be coming back tomorrow to see really probably them finishing up because when professionals know what they're doing, it goes extremely fast. So I'll come back tomorrow to see what is going on, and it's probably going to be done. It is the next day and the crew is back at it. You guys, this wall is exactly what I wanted. I know it's kind of one of those things where when it's in your head, you don't really know. And it's sometimes hard to get out what is in here out and actually see it. But this could not have come out any better. They're cutting up some of the final pieces and it's almost done. And it is extremely exciting to see it come together. After seeing that they use a machine to actually pick up most of the rocks, I don't feel quite as bad for not doing it myself because it kind of shows me that it really is quite heavy, so it probably wouldn't have necessarily gone that well on my own. Thank you for awesome machinery and people who know what they're doing. Because look at this wall. Could it get any straighter? That's exactly what I wanted. Oh wow, he is really able to get that on there with like, just like perfectly. It's kind of amazing. One thing you want to think about, whether it's a foundation or a wall, is how close and how large the plants are going to be to the wall or foundation because that means the roots are gonna be even larger. So for like this wall, you wanna stay about two feet away, the crew told me, because those roots could get to the wall and you don't want them to mess with it after all this awesome work. I'm doing um, a boxwood hedge all along here. Okay. But um, I'll do it. I mean, I'll, I mean, they're green mountains anyway, so I was probably gonna go a little over a foot out. That'll be awesome.
And with that last stone, that is it for the wall. Now all they need to do is just backfill with more rock and then with dirt to kind of level it out. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to do some more grading after that, kind of in the rest of the yard, but we'll talk about that later. Coming up next time, I'm gonna plant the beautiful hedge that I want and maybe add in a few surprises that you may not know about yet. So make sure to come back and follow me on Instagram and Facebook because I love to hear from you guys and see what you're doing. And as always, get out there and get dirty. See you next time.